Ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear friends, I welcome you from my living room in Cyprus. Uh, with the opportunity of the new year, I would like to wish to all of you Happy New Year and all the best in year 2011. Uh, since our subject is the digital divide, I would like to emphasize the opportunity to have this presentation from 2,000 miles away and I would like to discuss possible solutions and methods on closing the digital divide plus problems that might be arise from uh, those solutions. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to bring some great solution examples due to digital divide from the past in other countries. The Boston Digital Bridge. The Boston Digital Bridge is a system which was brought by Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It has a main concept uh, that educational technology can solve the issue of the digital divide. What was this program doing? Uh, well, this program started in 1996 and was concentrating on school children and their parents. It was actually helping to make both equally and similarly knowledgeable about computers. Uh, thus, it was using application programs and uh, navigating the internet. Uh, this is happening till today in several other schools in USA and Europe. Of course, you can argue with me that Boston, USA, and Europe has the technology, and you can ask, what about other countries? They don't have such in, uh, information communication technology. What kind of solutions do we need here? Well, before I answer to this question, I would like to bring another example taken from Wall Street Journal and written by John Simons in January 27, 2000. Um, he was acknowledging Bill Clinton asking the Congress for $50 million to provide cheap computers to people who had no access to Internet and in order to kill the digital divide in USA. My main point is that government can play a, a useful role against this digital issue. But who is going to give the money for Africa to, uh, to other developing countries? Um, I look around you and uh, be honest, how many times you have seen an old monitor or a desktop or keyboard or a mouse thrown away by someone, maybe next to the bin or outside the building? Um, nowadays there are thousands of computers thrown away because they are slow or they don't have enough capacity for us. To clarify the word us, I mean uh, the non-digital dichotomized people and certainly non-beginners uh, on using computers or using internet. Do not discard the fact though that uh, those old p computers uh, could be a great start for beginners and as the education of technology will increase there will be the need of more capacity and more speed. But if not, uh, then the introduction of the cheap laptops to poor countries could help a lot. Most notably Bolivia and Uganda, their laptops today that cost from 50 to 99 dollars and can serve uh, uh, their needs. Uh, the solution could come uh, through passing data and not just voice. Telephones though is the current media platform to manage data and not PC. Uh, Africa is uh, in the middle of the cell phone era, uh, therefore by creating mobile internet stations will be one good solution uh, until the computers arrive. Uh, imagine uh, that in Africa they come around once every few days to allow online access to people with cell phones. Imagine a small truck coming every week with the Wi-Fi for you and allows you to see your email. Because uh, of the mobile phones era now in Africa, more wireless networks um, that uh, allow users to access the net via mobile telephones can be a great step forward. Um, this automatically will increase the speed of use and the collection of information which will be accessible by anyone who has at least a telephone. Uh, small general information from you. Did you know that uh, Tanzania has five mobile operators uh, while Britain has only four? Um, making questions bring us to uh, our other solution. Um, not only the introduction of technology, but the education of the native and willing individual is essential. Um, we have found two studies supporting this idea. The first study, which is a collection of studies from several professors by Professor James James in 2008, uh, suggests that part of the solution requires that developing countries first uh, build up the literacy language skills, computer literacy, and technical competence. 
that uh, low income and rural populations need in order to make use of uh, information communication tools and, and technologies. The second study, which is from Peak and Azari in 2008 as well, uh, states that um, in developing nations, uh, primary education, educational investment, access to education, and government prioritization um, of uh, information communication tools is all important. Uh, specific solutions proposed by the study includes, includes uh, foreign direct investment, which is stimulating, attracting, and growing creative, technical, and scientific workforce. Uh, this is something like sending the elite to introduce and teach to Africans information communication technologies, but without an empire. Um, secondly, increase the access to education and digital literacy because nowadays um, there is the need of quick communication technologies. I don't think that anyone from you uses his or her book dictionary, but all of you are typing words in search engines or online dictionaries. Um, the solution would be like to reduce the digital divide. We need first to reduce and eliminate the gender divide and empower women to participate in these um, uh, information communication technologies because most of the developing countries still use women only for basic functions. Uh, of course, our group uh, came as well to possible solutions, but because um, they were similar to the studies, I will mention only two of them. Uh, the first one would be to introduce internet cafes, will give the opportunity to people of a big place to surf on net. Uh, if you compare this to markets, um, then we can see the similarity of the evolution. Uh, firstly, the fisherman or the fruit man was passing by car or a mobile stall uh, to sell the pro their products, uh, like the man in Africa, as I mentioned a while ago, with the mobile internet station. And then the evolution comes when fish and fruit stores and shops are created, like exactly the internet cafes. Um, a second solution would be, of course, uh, multicultural uh, education, uh, which will lead to more deeper thinking and more cognitive responses. Uh, what kind of problems, though, will arise from the introduction of uh, internet into certain countries or areas? Um, the ability to monitor and control certain websites might come into question. It might come into question because uh, of globalization, or if you prefer convergence, uh, will lead to commerce and capitalism. Uh, there is nothing bad with this, but uh, there are businessmen uh, out there who will love to take advantage of a virgin developing country in order to sell their products, of course. This might lead to different economic issues. Uh, talking about taking advantage, it's leading us to another issue. The ability to use the technology as a bargaining chip for or against certain people might occur. Uh, propaganda in certainly developed uh, countries who have better technologies could let the propaganda as they like and succeed to what they want. I can use my country as an example in this which is being bombarded by uh, Turkish and Greek propaganda with a very recent incident of Turkey blocking the airport's uh, website due to some sport violence between a Greek, and, a Greek team and a Turkish team were playing basketball in Cyprus. Um, another problem that might come to the surface is reliability with regard to safety, cost and effectiveness. Uh, will this help Africa to develop or is this done to take advantage of Africa and all the natural resources? Um, Closing this, uh, this will increase crime. Uh, online hackers with such an inexperienced public, uh, easy to manipulate, can arise crime. Thank you everybody for your attention. Paul, I give the ball back to you.